Good morning, this is Harley Schlanger from LaRouche Pack with your morning update for today, April 30th, 2020. And I have some explosive news for today's update that relates to the release of documents around the fraudulent trial and con or fraudulent conviction of General Michael Flynn, which was one of the first of the Mueller so-called victories during Russiagate. Uh, there's been release of new documents as a result of Attorney General Barr uh, turning over documents to a U.S. attorney in Missouri who is reviewing exculpatory evidence. Was it withheld? Was uh, Flynn treated unfairly? And the answer is coming back, absolutely. So let me go through some of these details because they're just coming out now. They will be the subject to a report from uh, researcher Barbara Boyd within the next 24 hours or so. You can look for it on the LaRouche Pack website. But this is a potential game changer because we've been waiting for the corrupt networks that were involved in the attack on President Trump from the time of his nomination to be brought to justice. And now it appears as though, despite the slowness of this and the destruction that it's done to the first term of the Trump presidency, it looks as though the wheels of justice may be turning, but you have to play your role to make sure that this goes all the way. So let me give you the, the report here, because what this does is it opens up the door to uh, prosecuting the real criminals. The exculpatory evidence in the Flynn case was hidden in a conspiracy by his attorneys from Covington and Burling, one of the more important Washington, D.C., New York law firms, with the Justice Department and the Mueller prosecutors. Uh, Covington and Burling, by the way, is the law firm where which Eric Holder, the former Obama attorney general, joined after he left the administration. Now, the what the documents disclose, and they were there are two sets of documents that have been released so far since April 24th by Flynn's new attorney, Sidney Powell, who's a very aggressive uh, woman who's making sure that this is not swept under the rug. But they expose a, a scheme to frame up Flynn, which included Comey, which included Andrew McCabe, his deputy, which included Peter Strzok, Lisa Page, and Pienka, Joe Pienka, who was a collaborator of Strzok in the interview that was done with Flynn. Now, the background is that President Obama expelled Russian diplomats uh, while he was still in office over the bogus charge that Russia had meddled in the U.S. election to help elect Trump. This was what was concluded by the Justice Department, the Obama intelligence team, with complete support and backing from British intelligence, possibly even initiation from British intelligence, to prevent Trump from proceeding as president with his plans to normalize relations or to improve relations for full cooperation with uh, President Putin of Russia. So the decision was made to get rid of Flynn, who was Trump's designated national security advisor. So this started with an intercept of a call between Russian ambassador to the United States, Kisilak, with Flynn, where they discussed the upcoming UN meeting to discuss what was going to happen as a result of this expulsion of diplomats. Now, what the new documents show is that this was then used as the basis to do a frame-up of Flynn, to run a perjury trap against him, and to lie in the process to make sure they could get him. Uh, when they had a meeting with Flynn shortly after, uh, actually it was even before the administration was sworn in, uh, it was set up by McCabe, the deputy director, who did not tell him that he needed an attorney. In fact, he told him he didn't need an attorney for the interview, that he's not a target of the investigation. The FBI agents who were sent, Strzok and Pietka, were instructed to relax Flynn and to make sure he didn't suspect anything. They used the transcript of the call <clears throat> between Flynn and Kislak to prepare questions, which is a classic way that the FBI frames someone up. They know what you said. They ask you a series of questions to try to get you to say something that's incorrect 
so that they can then get you for lying to the FBI, which is what happened in this case. Uh, they didn't tell him he had a right to an attorney. They didn't tell him he was a target of the investigation. They didn't tell him that they had transcripts. And after the interview, the 302 form, which is the document which is uh, written up to describe what happened in the interview, the original 302 report disappeared and was replaced by a, a version edited by Lisa Page. And it, there are reports that Strzok said after the interview that he didn't think that Flynn was lying. Now, after this was done and Comey was fired for his efforts to try and set up Trump uh, at his famous meeting at Trump Tower, where he went there with the, the uh, report from the British agent uh, Christopher Steele, which alleged that Trump was caught on video by Putin cavorting with prostitutes in a Russian hotel. When Comey went to Trump with that, and Trump basically dismissed it, uh, shortly after that, Trump fired Comey, and that led to the bringing in of Robert Mueller as a special counsel. Now, Mueller came in and saw Flynn as a target of opportunity and squeezed him. Uh, they threatened indictment on uh, numerous cases, the Logan Act, for example, uh, for working for foreign governments without uh, uh, disclosure and so on. Years in prison, big fines, and also threatened to jail his son. The legal fees from Covington and Burling were bankrupting him. He had to sell his house. And finally, he agreed to a guilty plea uh, in order to protect his son. Now, the deal was made with Flynn's uh, prosecutor, Von Grock, who had made a deal with Flynn's attorney not to put into the papers of the agreement, the, the guilty plea, that any reference to Flynn's son. So they lied about what the uh, guilty, uh, what the plea deal was. It was an off the record deal with his attorney and the prosecutor's office. Now, what the documents that are released show is that they practiced how to frame him up. McCabe practiced what to say in case Flynn asked, do I need an attorney? Uh, one document that was released shows that an FBI agent involved in this asked the question, what is our goal? Truth, admission, or to get him to lie so we can prosecute him or get him fired? So all of this is coming out. There are more documents that may be released today or tomorrow. Uh, the judge in the case is uh, going to be asked by Sidney Powell to dismiss the guilty plea. Uh, and there are possibilities for further prosecution because of the corruption and the illegal nature of this case. Now, the first question to ask is why Flynn? Remember, Flynn had been the head of the Defense Intelligence Agency. He was fired by Obama because he was releasing documentation that showed that the CIA under Obama and private contractors under the Obama administration were aiding Al-Qaeda and ISIS in the Middle East, providing arms, training, and so on, uh, through the cover of supporting moderate rebels against the Assad regime. So Obama was caught red-handed by Flynn. So having Flynn as national security advisor would be a disaster for the Obama team, and also for the whole operation, because the whole terror operation in the Middle East was a fraud. It goes back to the Bush as vice president, that is George Herbert Walker Bush, uh, running the support to the Afghan rebels against the Russians, where weapons, sophisticated weapons were provided, training was provided. This is where the bin Laden operation came from, from the Bush team. And Bush's team later became the team around Dick Cheney, the Project for a New American Century, the neoconservatives, Wolfowitz, uh, Douglas Fife, and others, who led to the invasion of Afghanistan and then the Iraq War on the pretext that Osama bin Laden was responsible for the planes that hit US targets on 9-11. So this is a fraud on top of a fraud on top of a fraud. And Flynn knew where some of these bodies were buried. So to have him in as national security advisor would be highly dangerous for this team. So they went after him, and they got him. Illegally, of course, 
as part of their operation to stop Trump. Now, what were they worried about with Trump? Why was there Russiagate in the first place? Because the whole operation against Trump was based on British geopolitical doctrine, which says that there should not ever be cooperation between East and West, North and South. There always has to be an enemy image. There needs to be permanent warfare. That's the policy we've been in since 2001, isn't it? So the fact that Trump came in saying he wants to end these wars was an existential threat to the bipartisan war hawks who were pushing this, especially to the neocons of the old holdover networks from the Bush team, as well as the Obama war hawks who continued to prosecute wars and regime change in, in Libya, in Ukraine, and, and the attempt to do that in Syria. So Russiagate was launched to prevent Trump from sitting down with Putin and working out a cooperative arrangement, not just to defeat terrorism, but one that could go beyond that, to resolve the situation in Ukraine, to resolve the situation in Libya, and to establish a basis for fair trade outside the framework of the globalist regime of the World Trade Organization and the anti-sovereignty faction that represents, that's represented in control of the central banks worldwide. This was a, an attempt to transform the whole situation that Trump came into office intending to do. Instead, he had to deal with the fraud of the FBI, the Brennan networks in the CIA, Clapper's networks from the intelligence community, that tied him in knots with what we know now as, as we saw Mueller completely collapse under testifying uh, the testimony to the Congress, there was nothing there. It was a witch hunt. It was a nothing burger, whatever you want to call it. But more importantly, it was a criminal conspiracy by embedded networks in both parties inside many administrations to direct U.S. policy to defend a global order based on war, based on imperial looting, based on looting including that against the American population and the population of Western Europe through deindustrialization, outsourcing of manufacturing, and so on. All of this is potentially to be exposed by this Russiagate story. This is what we at LaRouche Pack have been writing about and talking about since the time that Trump won the nomination in July of 2016. I've written many, many articles that are posted on my blog site, which you can get to with harley.larouchepack.com. Many, many articles. Uh, Barbara Boyd has written brilliant stories about what Mueller represents and who's behind this. But the key point is why? What was their intent? Well, ask yourself today, why is there a rush to war with China? It's the same networks. Trump was moving on a trade agreement with China. It was addressing one of the serious weaknesses in the United States, which we now see because of the COVID-19 story. The supply chains, the fragility of the supply chains, based on the fact that we've outsourced most of our manufacturing, uh, especially our pharmaceutical manufacturing, but that we're no longer an economy that has a national strength to defend itself, whether it's in healthcare, whether it's in, in commerce and, and trade and so on. Trump was moving to try and fix that when he was attacked with Russiagate. The phase one deal with China was a move toward fixing that. And instead, what do we have now? The bleeding of the same network saying China's guilty. China's killing Americans with a coronavirus, putting out fake stories to convince you that China is an enemy, just as they tried to convince you that Russia is an enemy that tried to elect Trump. Now, who elected Trump? The American people. The American people didn't want Hillary. And the fact of the matter is the American people don't want Joe Biden. It's not even clear that Biden can string two sentences together, even if he has a teleprompter. So the question that's posed by all this is that the evidence is now coming out. Will you join us to act to make sure that the prosecution of these criminals, including the British Imperial Networks going to MI6 
and the City of London, that they'll be included in the investigations and brought to justice. This is what President Trump can do if he wants to escape and make his presidency a truly great one by defeating this internal enemy in the United States. Thank you for joining me and I'll be back again tomorrow and hopefully there'll be more explosive developments to report.